Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, November 25th. It is the day before Thanksgiving. We've got a funny story for you up in the Dallas area out of Mansfield. And this is what happens when uh, you could probably call 2020 a school photo. Oh, uh, if 2020 was a school photo. Listen to this story. Brittany Kinley and her family all really excited when they found out their son Mason would be able to go to kindergarten in person this year at his Mansfield school. And she was hoping it would mean a little normalcy in a year that has been anything but that. And so she never imagined that the kinder pictures she could not wait to see would become a viral sensation, all because she didn't want a certain selection on the order form. She said, when I was filling out the form, there was a blank for his name, and I didn't want any personalization on the photo, and I didn't want to bypass, it wouldn't let me bypass the blank. So I just put, I don't want this, in all capital letters in the blank, and it <laughs> ended up printing directly onto Little Mason's photos. So the mom tells us that it wasn't uh, something funny at first, she said, I was so excited to get the envelope in the mail. I opened it and looked at the photos and actually didn't even notice until later that night when I went to give my mother-in-law one and we saw it at first. I was disappointed because it was his first official school photo, but then we all started dying laughing at it. That's what Kinley said. She posted Facebook with the hashtag if 2020 was a school photo and it immediately went viral, getting the attention of even like the Today Show. The company contacted her and will be reprinting the photos, but it happened in another instance too. This is a mom of a fourth grader up in Argyle. Texas. Oh, yes. Uh, so on this one, I think on the blank, it's she put no thank you in the submission form when she didn't want her uh, son's name on it. And then, of course, it printed no thank you on her son's fourth grade picture. <laughs> yes, little Declan, Declan's photo now says no thank you, fourth grade. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh, I know. I wish we had a picture of this one, too. Actually, the, these are nice photos of the kids. It, I mean, you know, great memories. I mean, his collar's kind of sticking out a little bit. I think that's probably why she wanted <laughs> no thank you on that one. But that's okay. <laughs> great good, picture. Good memories for, for uh, was it Mason and Declan? Yes. 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 Yeah, they, yeah, they had an interesting year pretty much like everybody else. <laughs> and for let's, now, let's, let's look take a look at today's. Nine at nine. Nine at nine. <laughs> The COVID tracking project says there are more than 88,000 Americans currently hospitalized with COVID-19. More than 2,000 people died from the virus yesterday alone. A huge spike in COVID-19 cases in Bear County now. 1,127 new cases and two more deaths were reported yesterday. So these numbers are going up exponentially now. The White House has given formal approval for President-elect Joe Biden to receive the president's daily briefing. It's a rundown of threats and intelligence developments compiled by the national security community. President Donald Trump expected to join his attorney Rudy Giuliani during a visit to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania today for a discussion on election fraud allegations. Discussion being led by Republican lawmakers in that state. President-elect Joe Biden will deliver a Thanksgiving address today from Wilmington, Delaware. According to his transition team, he will discuss, quote, the shared sacrifices Americans are making this holiday season. Sources tell CNN the White House has discussed a possible pardon for Michael Flynn. In 2017, Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI, but later tried to deny that plea. His case has since been tied up in legal limbo. Purdue Pharma has pleaded guilty to three federal criminal charges related to the company's role in creating the nation's opioid crisis. The plea deal includes the largest penalties ever imposed against a pharmaceutical manufacturer. Meghan Markle has revealed she suffered a miscarriage in July. The Duchess of Sussex made the revelation in an opinion piece for the New York Times. SpaceX has launched another batch of internet satellites into space. The Falcon 9 rocket is carrying 60 Starlink satellites. CEO Elon Musk says this is part of a mission to give internet access to everyone across the world. And that's today's 9 at 9. 61 degrees right now. Yeah, weather's going to be wild over the next four or five days and probably the best rainfall chances we've seen in a very long time, Justin. Yeah, we're kind of getting excited here in the weather department, you know, because it is something different. It has been such a quiet fall. We're actually getting some weather systems in here and we're getting some good rain chances, it looks like, Friday into Saturday. We had a front move through this morning. Right now we're sitting at 61. That northerly wind at about 14 miles per hour. Dew points down to 38, so the dew points really falling off. Humidity is going to be low today. And temperatures 
Should make it up to the mid 70s. We're going 76 for a high breezy. Uh, again, should be a nice day, just uh, a little bit on the maybe even windy side at times. And then as we look outside, you can see some of those clouds are off in the distance. We still have some clouds hanging on southeast side of Bear County. And then as you go east of there, you see the clouds. And you can actually pick out the fronts just south of Victoria right now. Didn't bring us any rain. Uh, but this next front we think will 54 degrees right now in comfort 56 Canyon Lake 60 in New Braunfels 60 Stinson and temperatures uh, again today should be in the mid 70s. There, there are also some pretty stout wind gusts right now gusting to 23 here in town. So our forecast uh, 76 degrees today breezy and then 78 tomorrow for Thanksgiving some increasing clouds. The next few days looks good. Those changes kick in Friday into Saturday. We've upped the rain chances. We're going to talk more about how long that rain is going to stick around coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, sir. 903 right now. There's Highway 90 at 36th Street. Look at all that blue sky out there. Bright sunshine. 410 at 151. Traffic is relatively light all across the city of San Antonio right now. Top stories we are following today. The Bear County Sheriff's Office has identified a man who was shot by a deputy yesterday afternoon following a chase. 29 year old David Lee O'Neill has been charged with attempted capital murder of a peace officer. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the incident started when a China Grove police officer tried to pull O'Neill over. A chase began going through Wilson County, eventually coming back to Bear County. Bear County deputies eventually were able to stop O'Neill using spike strips near Highway 87 and Stewart Road. Salazar says O'Neill then hit several patrol cars and even ran over a deputy who then fired his weapon in self-defense. O'Neill was hit in the upper body and according to BCSO, he is currently at Bamsey recovering from surgery. His bond has been set at $500,000. A driver could be facing charges following an overnight crash in East Bear County. It happened around 3.30 this morning at the intersection of FM 1346 and North Foster Road. Police tell us the driver ran a stop sign and hit two other vehicles. When emergency crews arrived, one of the cars was on fire. Bear County Fire Department was able to put the flames out quickly. Officers say two people were taken to the hospital as a result of the crash. The driver is being evaluated for possible DWI. Crime Stoppers hoping you can help them find a man with multiple felony warrants. They're offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to his arrest. They tell us 30 year old Eric Alberto Castillo is wanted for evading arrest and impersonating a public servant. This after police say he was in possession of a firearm and pretended to be a private investigator with the Department of Public Safety. If you have any information about where he could be, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. The new morning headlines, a teacher and a student in a dispute about using a bathroom. And another act of heroism from a passerby who came up on a burning SUV. Our David Sears is here to explain. Hey, good morning. And you guys remember Rockefeller, Lau, yeah. went for a ride in a tree to New York City? Got an update for you. You're going to like this one. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, we're going to start in Miami-Dade, Florida. That is a student telling the substitute teacher that he's got to go to the bathroom. The sub tells him he's got to wait because there's only a few allowed in the bathroom at a time because of COVID. About 30 minutes later, the student tries to leave the classroom to get to the bathroom, but the teacher blocks him and tells him to go back to his seat. The student tries to get around the teacher and out the door. Finally, the student grabs the teacher around the neck, and they both are going to fall back into that podium, and then the teacher is going to take him to the floor. There they go, and there he goes. The school district says they are investigating, and that teacher will not be placed in any classroom while they wait on the results of the review. By the way, the video came from another student in the room. All right, let's take you over to Caesars of China. That is a resident of an apartment building. Hold on to a baby for dear life. It's at night, so you can barely see it, but the child apparently fell out of the 13th floor window onto some wire mesh that's attached to the window on the 12th floor. The guy living in that apartment noticed the baby hanging out there just outside and off his balcony. He and his wife called the police. He grabbed the kid and then hung on to him for about 10 minutes waiting for firefighters to finally show up. They had to use some special cutting tools on those bars and some special pliers for the wire mesh. They finally got a big enough space to pull the little guy through. All in well for everybody. Good to hear. All right, back to Florida. You're looking at an SUV upside down against a chain link fence right there and some big trees and bushes. Inside, Richard Bracolo, who just happens to be a retired fire lieutenant. Bracolo noticed that there was some gas leaking causing a fire. He knew he only had a few seconds for help to get there, and that help arrived in the form of Corey Purington. When Corey got there, 
The vehicle was on fire. He was able to see Bercoli's hand and hear Bercoli tell him that he only had a few seconds. So Purington reached in, grabbed his hand and then pulled. He stood up there where the heat and smoke and flames would be coming, reached down and pulled a 195 pound man straight up deadlift. Uh, that's, a, that's a very extra, extraordinary feat. And uh, that man, that young man is a real hero. Because I knew if I was in that situation, I'd want the same thing to be done for me. Now, Bercoli suffered some burns to about a quarter of his body. He also suffered a broken shoulder and several broken ribs, but was able to live and tell about it. So that's the good thing. Eventually, thank Purington for saving his life. All right, this is drone video of a guy just swimming off the coast of Florida. And that's, there's the guy swimming over here. And that is a big shark that's underneath him. He doesn't even know. He's just like relaxing on his back. The shark's swimming around on the bottom. So you know the guy shooting the drone videos going, hey, <laughs> there's a shark underneath you. But then neither one of them seemed to really care. So why disturb the situation? Eventually the shark just swims away. He may not have even known the guy was above him. Yeah, passed up a good lunch, didn't he? Maybe so. And finally, a good way to head into Thanksgiving. We've been following the progress of Rockefeller. Remember, she's that little owl who was in a tree that was cut down and hauled to New York City to be the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Well, when the driver of the truck was putting up the tree, he noticed a little lady, that particular breed of owl about the size of a soda can. The bird was taken to a wildlife center after some rest and relaxation. She has been set free back into the wild in upstate New York. And one day when people ask, who was she? We can just say she was the bobblehead owl. Yes. Aww. Sweet little Rockefeller. Remember, she has her bobblehead now. Yeah, it took like, there what, 24 hours, maybe 48 yeah. for them to create a bobblehead? Yeah, it was quick. The bobblehead hall of fame. Yeah. That's a nice ending to the story, though. Yeah. So it's good to see she's back in the wild where she belongs. Back Who was she? <laughs> Rockefeller. <laughs> Rockefeller. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right now it is 9, 10, 61 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A new Disney Plus original movie hitting the streaming platform this week. How the film Black Beauty is hoping to raise awareness about the cruelty that some horses are facing. While many people are focused on giving during the holidays, scammers are focused on taking. We have tips from uh, FBI special agent from the San Antonio field office so you can avoid falling victim yourself. And volunteers with Meals on Wheels are giving back this Thanksgiving. How many people they are expected to deliver Thanksgiving meals to tomorrow? That's after the break. As we're looking live there and also a live look at the Dow. And right now it's uh, not a good start for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's down 0.59% uh, at 29868. Night 14, welcome back. Meals on Wheels San Antonio delivering holiday meals to those around the city. Organization is collaborating with the Raul Human Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. Approximately 2,500 meals are expected to be delivered on Thanksgiving. And here's a live look at the preparations happening right now. Volunteers and staff were screened, provided with PPE, including mask and hand sanitizer to ensure safe delivery. Thanksgiving is the first day. Meals on Wheels San Antonio is able to serve warm meals to clients all the way since back in mid-March. In March, we were still serving daily hot meals Monday through Friday to our clients, but with the start of COVID, we had to pivot to frozen meals. We're also not seeing them five times a week. It's only twice a week for most clients. The meals will include turkey, stuffing, trimming, sweet potato casserole, seasoned green beans, and pumpkin pie. Yeah, thank you to all the volunteers who are stepping forward. And we'll be talking more about food, especially Thanksgiving style yes. foods coming up later in the newscast. But right now, let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn. I was going to say about your favorite Thanksgiving dish, possibly. Uh, I, I'm still the, the jury is still out on that because okay. I like it all. But most casseroles, <laughs> any kind of casserole, I'm there for it. Okay. So would you eat uh, oyster stuffing? Well, okay, that's, that's okay. Not, I, I got you. That. I got you there. Okay, all right. Because some people dig that. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 61 degrees right now, guys. We're seeing uh, clear skies here over uh, San Antonio for the most part. Now you see there, off in the distance, there are some clouds, and that's what's left of that frontal boundary that moved through earlier. Northerly winds right now, 14 miles per hour, gusting to 23. That front uh, brought through. Some cooler conditions also created quite a bit of severe weather to our north, and we're going to have some video later 
from up around Dallas where there were some tornadoes last night, believe it or not. We did not see any rain here with the front. Again, just those gusty winds and now the drier air. 54 degrees burning stage right now, 54 comfort, 65 Castroville, 60 right now in New Braunfels and in the low 50s up there around Junction and Fredericksburg and 59 Del Rio, 64 out there in Carrizo Springs. You can very clearly pick out where this front is based on the humidity. We've still got dew points in the 70s down there around Beeville and Corpus, but north of this front, dew points in the 30s and 40s. So the humidity basically just fell off a ledge there and uh, we'll see dry air throughout the course of today. Look at the 24 hour dew point change. Uh, it is down 27 degrees from where it was yesterday. Yesterday it was fairly humid. Today, not so much. And uh, the wind gusts right now gusting to 23 here in San Antonio. Gusting to 20 in Pleasanton, 18 Gonzales. I think we'll see some gusts today anywhere from 20, 25 at times. It'll be a breezy day, not necessarily uh, windy. And, and you can see where all the cloud cover is now. Stretching right along I-35, really. And those clouds will eventually fade away. But that's uh, behind that front, which right now is right about there. And it is producing a few showers here a little bit closer to the coast. But clouds are still going to hang on for a couple more hours, perhaps, from Seguin to Gonzales down towards the Lavernia area and across our eastern county. So our forecast today calls for temperatures up around 76 for high. Sunny skies, northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. Here's the big picture. And there's our first storm system, which is very quickly moving east. You can see the line of storms with it. Severe weather associated with that yesterday, as we mentioned. And then here's our next storm system. This is the one we're getting excited about because it brings some pretty good rain chances by Friday into Saturday. So let's take a look at the forecast here uh, going forward. And uh, tomorrow looks pretty good. We'll start to see an increase in cloud cover. This is 5 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, during the late afternoon and evening hours, but should not impact your Thanksgiving plans. As we get into Friday, though, here comes our front. It looks like now this could be Friday morning that we're starting to see the effects of this front. Slides through with it. Rain chances really do pick up uh, Friday and into Friday afternoon, Friday evening. We could even see a few thunderstorms mixed in there. And then Saturday, this rain hangs around. We've got some upper level support. That's a surprise. Yep. <laughs> 919, 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the Grammy nominations are out. And there's a lot more talk about who didn't get nominated than about those who did. Why some artists are accusing the Grammys of corruption. 923 this morning, a growing backlash, if you will, over the 2021 Grammy nominations. As ABC's Megan Tavrizian reports, a top artist is now accusing the Grammys of corruption because of how the nominations are made. This morning, the biggest story about the Grammy nominations is who didn't get one. The weekend shut out after releasing one of the most praised albums of the year. Blinding Lights, the longest running top 10 hit in Billboard history, overlooked. The Canadian artist now calling the Grammys corrupt on Twitter. TMZ reporting he was snubbed after he chose to perform at the Super Bowl over the Grammys. He had a massive album with After Hours and the song Blinding Lights is the sound of 2020. It has just been unstoppable. So to have a song like that that is not recognized by music's biggest night is really shocking. Other snubs include Bob Dylan, The Chicks, Luke Combs, Halsey, Selena Gomez, and The Killers. Justin Bieber was nominated, but he's still crying foul. Taking to social media, he expected his Changes album to be recognized in R&B, not pop. Writing in part, from the chords to the melodies to the vocal style, it is undeniably, unmistakably an R&B album. To be clear, I absolutely love pop music. It just wasn't what I set out to make this time around. It's another good year for female artists. Beyonce leading the field with a record-breaking nine nominations. Dua Lipa and Taylor Swift both picking up six nods. Swift is up to win her third album of the year for Folklore. If Taylor Swift does win for Folklore, she will be the first female to win album of the year three times. Make it to Brisbane, ABC News. San Diego. Speaking of Taylor Swift, I now know how I'm going to spend part of my holiday weekend. Taylor Swift now streaming on Disney Plus, a film featuring performances from her latest album. Folklore, the Long Pond Studio Sessions, was directed by Swift, and it features performances of the 17 songs from her critically acclaimed album, Folklore, which was released earlier this year. She'll be joined by artists who sang with her on the album, like Aaron Desner from The National. 
and Bon Ivers, Justin Vernon. Uh, because the album was produced during the pandemic, each artist recorded their in studios thousands of miles apart. The film shot in upstate New York back in September. Also coming this week to Disney Plus, the newest film adaption of Black Beauty, the 1977 novel by British author Anna Swell. The movie stars Mackenzie Foy and centers around a teenage girl who creates an unbreakable bond with a horse. The original book was written to bring awareness to carriage horses and the cruelties that they were facing. Ashley actually flipped it to where Beauty is a wild mustang. And the reason of that is because the wild mustangs are currently being rounded up in holding pins and a lot of horrible things are happening to them. So hopefully with this film we can do what the original book did and bring awareness and try to hopefully help some horses. Black Beauty is available to stream on Disney Plus starting on Friday. Hey, remind me to get your, my, your Disney Plus password later, okay? Okay. Thanks. Right okay. now, 926, 61 <laughs> degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will look a lot different this year amid the pandemic. We're going to take a look at how organizers are preparing for the annual celebration. It's Wednesday, which means another edition of Katie's Science Lab. In honor of Thanksgiving, we are learning more about cranberry geometry. Boy, this class I may actually pass. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> I hope so. The day before Thanksgiving usually marks one of the busiest travel days of the year, but because of the pandemic, are people actually traveling? CNN's Daryl Forges tells us what airports across the country are seeing that today. And welcome back, it's 9.30. Millions of Americans usually spend the Wednesday before Thanksgiving traveling across the country to get to family in time for Turkey. But this year, health concerns and unemployment stemming from COVID-19 will keep many of those folks off the road. See it as Daryl Forges reports. The day before Thanksgiving, a lot of people traveling by air or by car today. And right here behind me at Hartsville Jackson International Airport, the busiest airport in the world, they're expecting a million people to come in and out of these checkpoints. This as the CDC, which is 13 miles up the road, is urging people not to travel this holiday season. Crowded airports and backed up highways. The typical sites of what is usually one of the busiest travel days of the year. But like most things in 2020, this year's Thanksgiving travel will look different. It's going to look a lot lighter than it has, especially in the past few years. AAA is forecasting at least 5 million fewer travelers than last year, the largest one year decrease since the Great Recession back in 2008. Since that forecast was put together, we know that number has definitely decreased, and that's because of the pandemic. With COVID cases still surging across the country, medical experts are urging everyone to stay where they are. Try to stay home and sacrifice this holiday for everybody else. And keep guests around the table at a minimum. The right number of people to have together is as few as possible. And the people that shouldn't be gathering with you are the people that are most vulnerable due to pre-existing medical conditions. AAA says a lot of people are taking a wait and see approach to their travel plans. Those who decide to travel are likely to go shorter distances and stay for a shorter time. That's why 95% of them will go by car. Traveling by vehicle is very flexible. You decide when you're leaving, where you're going, where you're stopping, and um, you know who's gonna be in the vehicle with you. It's all about eliminating exposure. And when it comes to driving by car, if you're going to do that to go see loved ones, family, or friends, according to health experts, they're urging people, if you do stop to get food, stop by a drive-through, or some other ways to not go inside of a dining area to avoid interactions with other people. From the Hartsville Jackson International Airport, I'm Daryl Forges. Thank you, Daryl. Well, tis the season for giving, and local FBI special agents say online predators are ready to take advantage of that. With the pandemic and now the holidays approaching, officials say it may be easier for someone to let their guard down and get scammed. As many of us are making our way through our holiday shopping lists, FBI Special Agent Michelle Lee from the San Antonio Field Office warns about websites offering fake deals. Some red flags include sites containing what are known as Internet top domains such as .club or .top. As far as supposed deals coming in the form of a text or email, Lee says if it seems to be too, too good to be true, it probably is. Going directly to the site that you're familiar with, not responding to a text message or an email that you received. The same can be said for those hoping to donate to charities. Lee says it's best to contact the organizations directly. We have a list of other red flags to look out for right now on KSET.com. Outside with a live cam, beautiful day before Thanksgiving here in South Texas. Here's Justin. 
Yeah, cl uh, clear skies right now. You see the blue skies here off in the distance. We do have a few clouds off to our east. Frontal battery came through this morning. That really brought in some drier air. I think that's the big story with this front. No rain for us. And you look at the dew points across the state. Really dry as you get up across parts of North Texas, and that is starting to move into our area. Look at the dew point right now, 38. Compare that to Corpus, which still has a dew point of 70. The front will move through there next couple of hours. A little closer look here at dew points closer to home. Most of us in the 30s and 40s, so that's going to feel pretty good today. We'll be a bit breezy, and I mentioned some of those clouds still hanging on places like Seguin, Gonzales. Uh, down towards Cuero, still seeing some uh, cloud cover. That should eventually fade away, and most of us will be looking at sunny skies this afternoon. 54 right now in Comfort, 58 Bandera, 60s elsewhere here across Bear County, and look for that high temperature to make it up to about 76 degrees today, 78 tomorrow. Thanksgiving looks good. We'll see some increasing clouds, and then the rain kicks in Friday and Saturday, some increasing chances of rain. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. We look forward to that. Taking a look out at Transguide this morning, there's US 90 at 36th Street. Things looking pretty good this morning. Why do I participate in No Shave November? It's simple. Help fight cancer. I've had a lot of family, a lot of friends who have had to battle cancer. A lot have made it through, a lot have it. I know how terrible that this disease can be. I know the path to overcome it is seemingly unsurmountable. So I know that the smallest thing I can do, not shaving for a month, help raise awareness and raise money to help others fight this disease, it's really the least I can do. Thank you, Max, and we are continuing to let it grow here for, uh, uh, we're in the home stretch. It, uh, this all wraps up on Monday, which is the last day of November. For more, go to ksat.com. We also search KSAT Mark Austin on Facebook, where I put a team link up, and I'm also promoting Officer Marcus Trujillo today. Uh, the challenge is uh, to see if we can raise $1,383 for Marcus, because $1,383 is his badge number with the San Antonio Police Department. Oh, that'd be so cool. By the way, it's KSAT, number five in the nation now for teams uh, raising money with $7,393 wow. raised so far. Awesome job. And then number number three as far as organizations, I believe. Yes. Now we're in the top five on both for organizations awesome. and teams on no-shave.org. Yeah, so thank you to all the viewers who have donated so Keep it far. coming, and there's time <laughs> for Marcus to, to raise that yes. $1,383. Yeah, still have time. And so we have a story about... Being Texan. So how Texan are you? That's what a quiz circulating on social media <laughs> wants to find out. So you get one point for every Texas style food you've eaten. And in the end, the total numbers reveal where you are on a scale from want to be Texan to Texas flag waving Texan. David <laughs> and Justin, born and bred, take the quiz with us now here on how Texan are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Fire All right. Away. Let's do it. Yep. All right. Are we gonna... Oh, shit. I say fire away. Fire away. <laughs> fire away. <laughs> That's right. Mark, go, go for it, y'all. All right. So are we going to just, are we going to do all of these? Um, well, yeah. let's do them real quick. How about okay. that? Okay. Yeah, all right. So for a point. Okay. Beginning chicken fried steak, yep. corn dogs, yep. fried okra, yep. enchiladas, yep. Mm -hmm. bowl of chili. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, crispy tacos. Yep, of course. Of course. Breakfast tacos. Pico de gallo. <laughs> frito pie. Yep. Brisket. Yep. Ribs. Yep. Uh, chili con queso. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Fried pork chops. Yep. Which is not really Texan. Fried bologna. Yep. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Sopapillas. I don't know about that yep. one. Justin Sopapillas? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't do the fried bologna. He's yeah, fried bologna. That's the one I'm always good Also, uh, fried chicken, fajitas, yep. oysters, fried yep. rabbit, homemade oh, ice what? cream. What? Fried rabbit? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up to 19. Who here has Oops. eaten fried rabbit? Oops. No thanks. Nobody? Okay, uh, so right. you right. don't get that point. As a matter of <laughs> fact, I would subtract one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right after fried rabbit is homemade ice cream. Okay. that's oh, what yeah. I, Which I say should have actually been bluebell. Yeah. Okay. Right. True. Yeah. Number 21 is a hot link sandwich. Uh -huh. Pecan pie. Uh -huh. Chili dog. Uh -huh. Jalapeno poppers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Definitely. All right. Refried beans. Goulash. Uh -huh. yeah. Goulash, which I argue should have been King Ranch chicken casserole instead of goulash. Yeah. My really? Dad made, agreed. My dad made goulash. Okay. It was hot. Yeah. All right. Guacamole? Yeah. Yeah. Shrimp brochette, which is uh, yeah. sh shrimp with bacon on it. Yeah. Very good. Fried gator. I don't know if you said okay. that. I don't know if it's Fried right. gator. Have y'all eaten fried gator? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Apparently, we stole that from Louisiana, but we're going to put it on the <laughs> list anyway. Really? Pinto beans, ranch style beans. Yeah. 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 Black, Black eyed peas. Yep. Y'all yep. eat black eyed peas? Every oh, yeah. year. I'm okay. sure funnel cake, right? Oh, yeah. That's a given. What right. about the filet mignon? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and filet mignon. Yeah, yeah that, that too. That, that Fried, fried zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, and who here, and I want to know the truth, including you, Katie Blake. And who's our prompter? Chris, is that you over there? Yes. Okay, who here has had Texas toast? Of course. Every, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay, everybody's yeah. safe. Yeah. yeah okay. All right, based have, on my... have rattlesnake on there. No, that was not on there. Yeah. So maybe it should have been fried rattlesnake instead of fried rabbit. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I, I right? Yeah, so that's fried. Yep. It's All in favor it. of adjusting the How Texan Quiz Are You Quiz? <laughs> so where are we? Are we like flag waving? No, we are all Texas all flag. Oh, yeah. Texas Lone flag star. waving. Texan. Yeah. You, you guys yeah. are all there. And I've lived here long enough and I've eaten enough of this stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. considered yeah. Texas. You get, you get bonus points for how many times you've eaten it. Oh, thank oh. you. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah, because Sopapilla is times probably 100 and <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys are all flag waving Texans. Good, Congratulations. Good. We, all, we all passed the test. I feel good, good to this. know. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna mosey on out of here. <laughs> Moseying on. <laughs> Got Where things to do. Get a rope. Right now, 939, 61 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And last week for Katie's Science Lab, we made coffee filter turkeys. And this week, we have another fun Thanksgiving experiment. Kitty Blake teaches us about cranberry geometry. That's coming up next. And we're back at 943, turning to a favorite Thanksgiving side and turning it into a fun learning experience about shapes. That's right. We can play with our food here. Today's Katie's Science Lab is all about cranberry geometry, and Katie Blake is here with her assistant, David Sear. Happy right. Thanksgiving, Katie Blake. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, I love a theme, so that's what we've been doing in November. We had the coffee filter turkeys last week. Mm -hmm. Check out Miss Rooney's turkey. That's It's baby disco turkey, right? That's right. That's what she named it. <laughs> yeah, Rooney made her coffee filter turkeys at home. Look at the little bow on her turkey. That is the cutest thing. Yes, stepmom. Mom, where are the little googly eyes? Oh, oh you don't, yeah. we don't have any? Yeah, we ran out. No problem. <laughs> she was like, well, I'll make them. I was right. like, okay. And she did. <laughs> they look so good. I'm glad she enjoyed that. Yeah, and time. you guys at home, don't forget, if you guys try this at home, please send us your pictures and video. You can do it via social media. You can email me. We'd love to see what you're doing at home. So continuing the Thanksgiving theme, are you okay? Do you have your gloves on? I'm getting ready because this is going to get messy. This is going to be fun. <laughs> the gloves and I think, well, we're using toothpicks, so maybe the, the eyewear for safety. Yeah. Are you fogging up, David? Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little bit? <laughs> a little bit. It's all kind of hazards here. So here's what you need for cranberry geometry. This is pretty easy. Cranberries. Thaw them out if they're frozen, and then toothpicks. That's it. Easy, and some easy. knowledge of easy geometry. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yes, so we're going to dive into geometry. And I know for the younger kids, this may be something that they haven't gotten to in school yet. But uh, we're going to learn all about geometry. So what, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your toothpicks. I'm definitely going to have to take the gloves off to get you the toothpicks, David. Um, you're going to connect toothpicks using your cranberries and we're going to make different types of shapes here. So before we get to the 3D, because those are more fun, we're going to look at our 2D polygons. Ooh, polygons. Ooh. So shapes made of different number of, of sides here. So this one has eight edges. So each toothpick is an edge. So what would we call this shape, David, with eight edges? Octagon. Octagon. Good. <laughs> yes. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you. And and one more before you totally pass your test. What what do we call the shape with five edges? David? Stop sign. That's a house. Oh, no. Pentagon. A house. Pentagon. Yeah. Pentagon. Pentagon. Close. You were really foggy. Because you up. know, like the Pentagon is up there in Washington D.C. It is. <laughs> and it's got it's got five sides. This is the mini the mini Pentagon. There you go. So you can. Make different shapes. Use all the you know all the different triangles. So David, that's what I want you to try. I want we have our two or our three D triangle. Excuse me. I want you to try to make a two D triangle. Okay. If you can, we're running out of time. Okay, I'll be. We're gonna see if David can. So yeah, start with the two D and then go to three D and three D. Hold on, hold on. See, get that. <laughs> 3D is when you can teach the kids about the faces on the polygons. So the faces are these the flat sides here. So have the kiddos make different different shapes. You can do 2D, you can do 3D. If you want to eat the cranberries, just wash them off first. And wash your hands. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, David, you're almost there. This way. Mm -hmm. Looking good. <laughs> okay, we might have to Almost there. We have to show this Good later. job, David. <laughs> David made a triangle. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, this is easy. I do it in 3D and that's though, 2D. So. so we're going to wait for your 3D in okay. the commercial. Yeah. Out. Maybe maybe we check back in tomorrow, David. <laughs> uh, we'll, keep you, we'll keep you updated. Berries are rolling under the set. And I'm going to find that like 10 years ago. Who left drop cranberries oh, everywhere in their no. KSAT studio? <laughs> So yeah, this is fun. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your oh, cranberry geometry. So like you said, just remember to, to thaw them out first. Oh, if of you're course. Doing yes. You're going to have a hard time. Yeah, these together. have been thawed. All right. David's on track. We'll try to check back here in just a oh, minute, he's, David. Oh, he's got a 3D. He's so close. Awesome he's job. so close. Katie, thank you you're once welcome. again. Thank Happy you. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. David, best wishes right now, 947, <laughs> and Justin's back. Hi, and Justin. He's David, gotta, we're, we're going to need you for the noon show, so... <laughs> He, he'll be done before okay. then, yes. right, David? Yeah, he's he got, got it. it. He's got it. Oh, he's got it. He's, he's got, got it. it. Can we can we take it? Hold I know. On. In David's defense, he's oh, wearing those gloves. Mr. Sears, <laughs> I tell you. Let's point out your cranberries are your your vertices. That's the vertices. You, the, the what? The cranberries are your Vertis, the vertices, vertices where all okay. the lines connect. That's another term you can teach the kiddos. Awesome. All right, I'm done. We're done. Take that, Time. 2020. <laughs> we were supposed to wrap a minute ago, David. We're done. Right. Done. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to geometry class. Okay, uh, time lapse. We had that front move through uh, this morning. Actually, take a look at this, guys. Uh, I want to show you some video first coming out of uh, Arlington. Uh, there was a tornado last night. We had that front to move through here. That same front created severe weather up there in Arlington. You can see some of the damage there. It was actually pretty significant. I'm seeing some of the pictures on social media of the tornado. It looked pretty large. Uh, so they'll be doing some cleanup there today. Keep in mind, we do typically have a secondary severe weather season, uh, not as big as the spring, but in the fall, we, we do have some severe weather with some of these fronts. So just a heads up there, we could see a, strong, a couple strong storms on Friday as our next front moves in. Okay, now let's take a look outside and uh, show you that we're at 61 degrees right now. Northerly winds at about 14 miles per hour. Dew point is at 38. Humidity is really low, and that is because of that front. Uh, there still are some clouds that are trying to hang on just behind the front uh, across our eastern counties, places like uh, Gonzales and down towards Lavernia. But these are starting to thin out some, and we should see sun area-wide later this afternoon. 59 degrees right now at Randolph, 57 Bernie State, 63 in Hondo, 68 Carrizo Springs and clear there. We've got some clouds around Kennedy where it is 66, and those pretty stout northerly wind gusts right now gusting to 23 in San Antonio and gusting to 21 in Gonzales. That front is very quickly making its way out of our area. There still are some dew points in the 60s, Laredo and Beeville, but that will quickly change as this front progresses south. And they're looking at the dew point tracker. It'll be dry today. We'll start to see those dew points build again tomorrow. You won't really notice it. By Friday morning, there should be enough humidity there to where uh, once this front comes through, we think that'll be maybe midday Friday that will kick off some showers and storms, we think, and then the dew points fall off again behind this front. Uh, there's another look at the visible satellite picture and uh, some of those clouds here around San Antonio. And the forecast calls for temperatures up around 76 this afternoon. Northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's the setup. Our first system is quickly moving away. You can see the line of showers and storms associated with this, and that'll move to the northeast, creating thunderstorms for a large portion of the eastern half of the country today. And then here's our next storm system, which is up across the Pacific Northwest. This is the one that will swing through Friday into Saturday. And it'll take some time to get through here. So that's why we think we'll have sort of extended rain chances Friday even into Saturday afternoon. So the forecast looks like this. Sunny today, tomorrow some increasing clouds, especially down to the south. No big deal. Front comes through, starts to enter the area 7 o'clock Friday morning. As it slides through, there you get your showers and storms. A couple strong storms possible, as we mentioned on Friday. It won't be widespread severe weather, but maybe some gusty winds. Can't roll up, maybe some small hail and a few of the cells. And then on Saturday, we'll get pretty widespread rain, I think. We'll be behind the front. You'll get some overrunning as we have some upper-level energy coming in. And it has the potential to be sort of a damp, wet, a uh, cool day on Saturday, and then that energy will pass us by Saturday night. We'll get to clear out on Sunday. As far as rainfall goes, we're hopeful here that we could see some pretty measurable rainfall right now, maybe on the order of one day, even two inches in some cases, I-35 off to the east. So this is encouraging, and it's great to see in the extended forecast. 78 degrees tomorrow, 69 on Friday, 60% chance of rain, 70% chance on Saturday, and cool, 59. 
Breezy on Sunday, high of 65, and some chilly temperatures Monday and Tuesday morning. We'll be right back. It's tradition, but this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade may be the most unique one you've ever seen. And some say it really won't be a parade at all. Organizers decided the safest thing to do was to make a television only event. So instead of a parade, portions of this are pre recorded and live elements will take place in a small space in front of the Macy's store on 34th Street. No visitors allowed. The area in front of the store will be treated like a closed movie set. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will be televised on NBC tomorrow from 9 till noon. All right, so we've been talking food pretty much all week long, and Instagram's got a survey out of the most famous pies by state, according to their unofficial survey, and the results are weird. Well, except for, I'm going to jump to Texas real quick. That one didn't surprise me. Pecan pie? Yeah, pecan pie. Yeah, Texas, and, yeah. And, and most of the southeast, it's either pecan or sweet potato pie, but the weird one, for some reason, okay. cranberry pie was yeah. the leading result for most of the U.S. Now, if you Google cranberry pie, you will be hard pressed to find a decent recipe because most people are saying, what are you talking about? We don't eat cranberry pie. I've lived in this state or that state with cranberries on right. it my entire life and we've never had cranberry pie. Maybe it's like a secret hand, hand me down, you know, it's recipe from generations of families. Need, it's going to need a lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Or ice cream, right? <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving.